what were uh, you know what were the the what was the nature of forgery? Well, it wasn't really as simplistic as people think. That they you know all forgeries were intentional um, false attributions to the Prophet sallallahu by people who who sought to destroy destroy Islam. Certainly, that was one category of forgeries. Um, if if I was to summarize the the, the categories and types of uh, maudu hadith, you could categorize them into four main uh, groups. The first were forgeries, like the forger uh, intentionally associates his own statements, like he comes up with a statement and he attaches it to the Messenger of Allah. This is the majority of the cases in, in the early history of Islam. And most of the examples that we find in, 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 in the books of the identification of forgeries in the time of like, you know, the Imams, like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad, Imam Bukhari, they were of this nature, that people were making up statements and then saying the Prophet وسلم, said it and attaching a sanad, a chain of transmission to it. But there were also forgers who attributed statements of like one of the early Muslims, the Salaf, the Sahaba, Tabi'een, Atba' Tabi'een. And then they would attach that to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, intentionally. <clears throat> okay, what would be the reason behind that? That's a different discussion. But they wouldn't make up the statement themselves. Perhaps they wouldn't have the, the eloquence, the the the, uh, uh, the beauty of expression in order to do that themselves. So what they would do is that they would take expressions of other individuals from the early Muslims and then they would attach them to the Messenger of Allah intentionally. A third uh, category is when the forger would attach a strong chain of a hadith to a problematic hadith, a problematic chain. So you have a, a very problematic uh, chain, weak or even worse, and a person wants to popularize that hadith. Okay, so they actually heard it from somewhere, but they know that it's weak. They know that it's problematic. So what they do is that they kind of they just invent a new chain for it, and they know that they take a chain that is actually sahih, that is very strong, authentic, and then they switch the chain with the the, the problematic one. This was also a form of, of of forgery. But there's also a category of forgery or maudu hadith where someone accidentally or unintentionally attributed a statement to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, that was a statement of one of the early Muslims. Like Ali radiallahu anhu statements. Hassan Basri radiallahu anhu rahmatullahi statements. Um, and, and one of the reasons why this, this, this happened was because the statements of many of these early Muslims were very eloquent. And in meaning, were similar to the meaning of already established hadiths. Okay? So, uh, as we'll see in, in some of the case examples, there are a lot of examples that statements that we probably have heard as being prophetic, but the scholar said, no, this is actually not the Prophet ﷺ statement. This is the statement of Ali So the, the, the statement is true. It's just not correctly attributed to the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And here's where we have to be careful. A lot of individuals, when they go online and they, you know, they discover that a hadith is a forgery or it's fabrication, it's a false attribution, They'll outright deny not only the attribution but also the meaning. And that could be problematic because the meaning may actually be established by hadith. It may be a meaning that's established clearly in the Quran. And if you reject that meaning, you're also rejecting the Quran, perhaps. So the scholars do uh, you know, exercise caution in identifying forgeries, in, in that they will identify a statement as a forgery, but they will say the meaning is sound. And a lot of people get confused by that. Like, Wait a minute, you're saying it's a, it's mawdu but also sound? That doesn't make sense. That's like an oxymoron. So, no, actually, we're saying that the attribution of the love of the of the words is false, but the meaning is uh, sound. In fact, this is properly attributed to one of the companions. And sometimes, when a statement is attributed to a companion, it can also be perhaps assumed that it was derived directly from the Prophet It's a rewording of a meaning that was conveyed to them by the Messenger of Allah 